Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzom. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 16th of December. India pays tribute to fallen soldiers of 1971 war with Pakistan. Taliban delegation in Pakistan amid halt in Afghan peace talks. And Nepal's Pashupati Nath Temple reopens after ninth month long pandemic hiatus. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday paid tributes to the war heroes of the 1971 India Pakistan War at the National War Memorial in capital New Delhi. He also lit a victory torch and kick started the 50th anniversary celebrations of India's decisive military victory in the war against Pakistan, which led to the creation of Bangladesh as a separate nation. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday paid tribute to soldiers who laid down their lives in the 1971 war against Pakistan at the National War Memorial in capital New Delhi. PM Modi, who was accompanied by Indian Defence Minister Rajnath Singh and chiefs of the three armed forces, laid wreath at the memorial and also lit Swarnim Vijay Mashal, a victory torch to kickstart the 50th anniversary celebrations of the 1971 India-Pakistan War. Vijay Divas or Victory Day is observed every year on December 16 to mark India's decisive military victory over Pakistan in the third war between the neighbours, which led to the creation of Bangladesh as a separate nation. The Indian Army also paid tributes to the war heroes at a memorial in Srinagar city in India's Jammu and Kashmir on the occasion. Almost uh, 93,000 Pakistani prisoners uh, you know, surrendered. And probably this is the largest number of surrenders after the Second World War. We are also conscious of the huge sacrifices that the Indian soldiers made in this particular battle, uh, which gave birth to the independence of Bangladesh. And I have no doubt in my mind that uh, we as Indian Army will continue to do all actions to defend our country and also to uphold the highest values uh, of our nation. What was East Pakistan at the end of the British rule in 1947 broke away into independent Bangladesh in 1971 after the war between Bangladeshi nationalists backed by India against the Pakistani forces. About 3 million people were killed in the war. People in northern India reeled under icy winds and fog on Wednesday as the cold wave continued unabated. But braving cold weather conditions, protesting farmers asserted they will make the centre repeal the three farm reform laws. Farmers have been demonstrating at Delhi borders for nearly three weeks against the new farm laws that will allow them to sell produce to buyers beyond government-regulated wholesale markets. Even as the winter season started getting intensified in northern India, protesting farmers from Punjab and the neighbouring state of Haryana continued with the agitation against the three farm laws at Delhi borders on Wednesday. Despite facing adverse weather conditions, they have been demonstrating for nearly three weeks against deregulation of the agriculture sector that will allow them to sell produce to buyers beyond government-regulated wholesale markets where growers are assured a minimum price. On Wednesday, security arrangements were tightened at the Chilla border between Delhi and Noida as farmer union leaders threatened to completely block the key border point to press for repeal of the laws. <laughs> पंजाब से चलता 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 सारे भारत के किसानों का दोलन बढ़ गया भारत के कले किसानों का नहीं जो भारत के लोग रहने वाले हैं कारखानेदार हैं कोई भी है मलाजमा बरिया किसान 
ਮਜ਼ਦੂਰ ਹੈ ਕਿਸਾਨ ਹੈ ਇਹ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਦਾ ਦੋਲਣ ਬਣ ਗਿਆ ਕੱਲੇ ਕਿਸਾਨਾਂ ਕਰੀ ਹੈਗਾ ਇੰਡੀਆਸ ਪ੍ਰਾਈਮ ਮਿਨਿਸਟਰ ਨਰਿੰਦਰ ਮੋਦੀ ਔਨ ਟਿਊਸਡੇ ਬੈਕਡ ਹਿਸ ਗਵਰਨਮੈਂਟਸ ਐਗਰੀਕਲਚਰਲ ਰਿਫਾਰਮਸ ਐਂਡ ਸੈਡ ਪ੍ਰੋਟੈਸਟਰਸ ਓਪੋਜ਼ਿੰਗ ਦਾ ਲੈਜਿਸਲੇਸ਼ਨ ਆਰ ਬੀਇੰਗ ਮਿਸਇਨਫਾਰਮਡ ਦ ਰਿਫਾਰਮਸ ਕੰਟੇਨਡ ਇਨ 3 ਲਾਸ ਇਨੈਕਟਡ ਇਨ ਸੈਪਟੈਂਬਰ ਲੂਜ਼ਨ ਰੂਲਸ ਅਰਾਉਂਡ ਦ ਸੇਲ ਪ੍ਰਾਈਸਿੰਗ ਐਂਡ ਸਟੋਰੇਜ ਆਫ ਫਾਰਮ ਪ੍ਰੋਡਿਊਸ Six rounds of talks between government officials and farmers union leaders have failed to resolve one of the most pressing issues facing Modi's government. A Taliban delegation led by Mullah Abdul Ghani Baradar arrived in Pakistan on Wednesday for a 3-day official visit at a time when the militant group has already refused calls from Afghan President Ashraf Ghani to hold the next round of peace talks on Afghanistan soil. The Afghan peace talks which were being held in Doha since September have been halted till January next year. An Afghan Taliban delegation led by Mullah Abdul Ghani Baradar arrived in Pakistan on Wednesday for a 3-day trip. The delegation upon arrival in Islamabad met Pakistan's Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi to discuss issues of mutual interest. The group is also scheduled to meet Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan during its stay. Pakistan's role in the Afghan peace negotiations is a delicate one as Afghanistan accuses the neighboring country of supporting the Taliban. But Pakistan denies the charges saying it has also suffered from the fighting. This comes as the Taliban has opposed Afghan President Ashraf Ghani's call to hold the next round of the peace negotiations in Afghanistan, saying the request signals fear on the republic's side. The militant group said negotiators of both sides will resume the now halted peace talks but in Doha on January 5. Moving on, protests erupted recently in Gilgit Baltistan to demand compensation against the illegal demolition of shops and houses in the Nyor district by Pakistani government. The protesters blamed Islamabad has been plundering swaths of land in the illegally occupied region and their properties were demolished to pave the way for China Pakistan economy corridor. Protests broke out recently in Danyor district of Gilgit Baltistan as Prime Minister Imran Khan led Pakistan government illegally demolished several shops and houses in the region. The protesters demanded that they must be compensated immediately while blaming the properties were demolished without any prior notice to pave a way for the China Pakistan Economic Corridor or CPEC in illegally occupied territory. Pakistan and China have been vigorously pursuing China's ambitious CPEC project in Gilgit Baltistan. Locals blame for that they have plundered large swaths of the illegally occupied territory ruthlessly of any form of habitation. Locals accuse Pakistan of systematically exploiting the resources of the region and not sharing the dividends with them. Any resistance they say meets brutal government reprisal with activists and leaders haunted arrested and tortured In news from Nepal with covid-19 protocols in place Nepal's revered Hindu shrine Pashupati Nath temple reopened for devotees on Wednesday morning after 9 months The temple has reopened for the public while abiding with government set health protocols Nepal's Pashupatinath temple reopened for the public on Wednesday after being closed for 9 months owing to the COVID-19 pandemic. Closed since the first phase of lockdown starting in March due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the temple in capital Kathmandu will now remain open from 6 a.m. to 12 p.m. on daily basis. Devotees were delighted to offer prayers after the long hiatus. They will be expected to follow all the hygiene and safety protocols to contain the spread of COVID-19. Everyone visiting the temple premises will have to wear a mask compulsorily. Mo aaja dekhi hoyna bahu. Mo ali pardesh bar aathi. Aaye dekhi darshan garna na paako. Aaja darshan jale gara hai. Tesko jaye kalyan ho. Pashupatinath Baba le saran paak ni nos. Although the temple opened from Wednesday, the special puja, singing of hymns and ritual activities however would not start immediately. 
दर्शन गरी रहना कोई कते भी नहीं भक्तों जन और एक आपस में ठोकी नहीं ना अर्थात अलग अलग लाइन को प्रबंध करें कैसा हो तो आज बोली पर से कई दिन का हमें ले हरी सके पर से हमें दर्शन आर्थिक भक्तों जन का चाप बढ़ देगा बने हमें ले अन्य डॉक्टर तरफ बने ये हिसाब लेने हमेरो दर्शन के व्यवस्था हमेरो कर Pashupatinath Temple Complex finds a mention in UNESCO World Heritage Sites and attract pilgrims from all over the world. Meanwhile, Nepal's coronavirus infection count on Wednesday advanced to 250,180. Moving on to news from Sri Lanka. The Sri Lankan Navy in two separate occasions has arrested 36 India fishermen for allegedly breaching the international maritime boundary line and illegally fishing in its waters. The 36 Indian fishermen were arrested on Tuesday along with the five trawlers and fishing accessories during special operations carried out by the Sri Lankan Navy and Coast Guard in several sea areas of the island nation. A press statement issued by the Sri Lankan Navy said, the such operations were conducted adhering to the COVID-19 preventive guidelines and further investigations are currently underway with regard to the apprehension, the Navy said. India and Sri Lanka shared an expensive oceanic border without any perceptible demarcation and fishermen on both sides ignore rules while netting their catch. Private fish farming has emerged as an interesting means of livelihood for several youths in India's Jammu and Kashmir. The fishing industry in the Union Territory has increased on a large scale with hundreds of people finding employment in fisheries with the help of the government. Have a look. Fishing industry in India's Jammu and Kashmir has greatly increased at a large scale with hundreds of people finding employment in fisheries across the valley with the help from the government in the Union Territory. In Anantnag district, three brothers have started a private fish farming business after reaching out to the Department of Fisheries for help. Ashik Hussain, one of the brothers and the owner of a trout fish farm, said the brothers received a lot of help from the department in terms of construction, feed and equipment. We are three brothers and we didn't get a job. और उसके बावजूद हमने फिश डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फिशरीज के साथ राबता किया और उन्होंने हमें ये फिश फार्मिंग करने का जो तरीका है वो उन्होंने हमें बताया है और उन्होंने हमें पहले रेस्वे दिए थे दो रेस्वे दिए थे उन्होंने पहले हमें उसके साथ साथ उन्होंने दिए थे हमें सिक्की में उस सिक्की में दिए थे आर के बी वाई में उन्होंने दिए थे कंस्ट्रक्शन के लिए उन्होंने दिए थे हमें पैसे सब्सिडी में और उसके साथ साथ सीड भी दिया था और फीड भी और कुछ इक्विपमेंट भी पहले दिया था यहाँ पर डिपार्टमेंट ने अच्छी बात की है कि ये प्राइवेटाइज जब से हो गया है कि आम जो बेरोजगार जितने भी बंदे हैं और खासकर जिसके पास अच्छी खास जो वाटर सोर्स है इनके पास पानी के जो वसाइल है वो मौजूद है तो और साथ साथ इनके फिजिबिलिटी भी है Trout fishing of the Kashmir Valley has also been a great tourist attraction for years now as the beautiful geographical variations along the course of each river and lake offers endless possibilities for anglers. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. India pays tribute to fallen soldiers of 1971 war with Pakistan. Taliban delegation in Pakistan amid halt in Afghan peace talks. And Nepal's Pashupati Nath Temple reopens after ninth month long pandemic hiatus. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.